Let's begin. So today we're going to start the second part of the chemistry unit. I would really like to, we have like about three weeks left before spring break. Um, whether we're done or not, we're having a test before spring break. And I do not want to hang it over, so, right? So we'll, we'll sort of try to time it. It might, uh, this unit's reasonably short, um, so it might even be before then. We might start the next unit before spring break. But there's a couple of days in there too we're missing stuff. So. Okay, so after this you'll know what a reaction is and be able to write word equations. Today is March the 2nd. So what are some everyday examples of brushing of chemical uh, reactions? Well, here's a few. Brushing teeth. Brushing your teeth is oh, a chemical God. reaction. Why is that? Because it's got chemicals in the teeth. Yeah, and what do they do? They whiten your teeth. They, they could. It could be a teeth whitener. Um, it could be like fluoride that reacts with your teeth to, to help your enamel, right? So it's yeah, brushing your teeth, chemical reaction. Uh, eating breakfast. How is that a chemical reaction? Cereal has tons of chemicals in it. Well, that's true, I guess, but does it react? It reacts to your taste buds. Mm. That wasn't what I was thinking of. I, I don't really know. When you eat something, it goes into your stomach. Yeah. Hydrochloric acid, in fact, right? Yeah, so the hydrochloric acid in your stomach reacts with your, what you have breakfast? Me? Yeah. Nothing. Nothing? I'm eating breakfast. Oh. Sure. So the hydrochloric acid reacts with your Cheerios, and there you go, right? I that's a lot. I ate a chocolate bar. You had a chocolate bar for breakfast? Yeah. I would explain a few things. What about driving a car? <laughs> Is that a chemical reaction? Yeah. yeah. Not so much the driving part, but what's happening in your engine, right? Yeah. Oh, converting yeah. gasoline, hydrocarbons, converting into energy, producing carbon monoxide at the back, water vapor, stuff like that, right? Now, do you want me to read page 216, 217 first, or do you want to watch Bill Nye first? Bill Nye. Okay. So, oh, I know what I was supposed to do. I was supposed to read page 216, 17. So I'm going to do that quickly. Quickly, quickly. You guys don't have this. I I elected to not hand out textbooks. So all you gotta do is sit back and listen to me. Thank you. You're welcome. What chemical reactions do you conduct every morning? Well, that's where I got the idea about eating breakfast and brushing your teeth and all that stuff, right? Chemical reactions are also used to make many of the chemical compounds that are part of our lives. The plastic containers that hold your lunch and the synthetic fibers used to make some of your clothes have been made by the chemical industry. When you get a bacterial infection, the antibiotics that the doctor may prescribe are the products of the pharmaceutical chemical industry. Children's toys, uh, dolls, plastic mini blocks, or inline skates are mostly made of synthetic products. Chemical reactions may have negative effects as well. The combustion of gasoline gives us the freedom to travel large distances, but produces polluting gases that can cause respiratory and other health problems. How do chemical reactions happen? How do chemists categorize the thousands of different chemical reactions? In this next unit, you saw patterns in, or you will, in the last unit, sorry, you saw patterns in how chemical compounds can be categorized as ionic or molecular or covalent. And using your understanding of these patterns, you were able to name different chemical compounds. In this chapter, you will learn to recognize patterns that will help you understand and predict different types of chemical reactions. Okay, so word equations. That's the next page, I think, right? You got something there, I believe. So, what is a chemical reaction? Here's the definition. Write it down, Tiffany. A chemical reaction is a process that leads to the transformation of one set of chemical substances to another. A chemical reaction is a process that leads to the transformation of one set of chemical substances to another. So what were the examples that Bill and I have in the video? Steel wool was what? Do you remember, Tiffany? Don't remember? Right? Oxygen. And what happened? <coughs> I was doing, doing a test. I didn't really I wasn't paying that close attention because I've seen it already. Didn't it go kaboom? Okay, 
page 218 it says in book 3. Chemical reactions may involve sophisticated chemicals as in the explosive reaction to dynamite or simple household materials as in the reaction of a bathroom cleaner with a stain. They may occur constantly in the growth of your body or occasionally as the changing of color of leaves in the fall. How can you describe such a wide range of reactions? For convenience, chemists use a word equation. A word equation is one way of representing a chemical reaction. It tells you what reacts and what is produced. Word equations are an efficient way to describe chemical changes, to help chemists recognize patterns, and to predict the products of a chemical reaction. So they're a simplified sort of thing, right? And they're going to basically take things you know already and just sort of take you to that next step. Have you got this on your page? Yeah. Okay. Do you know what the word reactants means? Let me tell you. It means the chemicals on the left side of the equation. If you want to put it in everyday English, and I think I should, I'm going to type it. It's really what you start with. Does that make sense? So in the Bill Nye case, it was the steel, wool, and the oxygen. What you start with. If you're eating breakfast, it's the Cheerios and your stomach acid. So the other side is called the The, the, they're called the products, the chemicals on the right side of the equation. Not right side like out there that sells the tractors and stuff, not that right side. Oh, well done, awesome. Uh, what else would you say instead of what you start with, what would you call it? What you end with. What you end with. Right? Okay, Desiree get that down. Okay, so the reactants and the products. So what you need to be able to do is to identify them. So here is a word equation. Iron plus oxygen, and then the little arrow thing I'm going to read as gives you. Iron plus oxygen gives you iron three oxide. So what are the reactants here? Iron and oxygen. I'm going to do go like this. I'm going to put... Go like that, and I'm going to say reactants, and I'm going to put them in a box. If you've got colors, you can, or highlighters. You want me to handle highlighters or something? So the reactants are there, and what would you call this side over here? Um, products. The things you end up with, the product. Okay. Uh, so... Do you guys have a spot for this? Steel, wool, and liquid oxygen? Mm -hmm. yeah. Iron plus oxygen gives you iron three oxide. That is the word equation. Oh, um, didn't we just do that? Yeah, I think you guys just did that. Is this the same video? I think I got things out of order here. Oh, copyright infractions. Oh, well. Good thing we saw that one already. Iron plus oxygen gives you iron three oxide. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Is there the next one is, oh, here, copper and silver nitrate. I'm going to do this. Nitrate, the word equation. What would you write? You want the product? I want, well, what are the reactants? The reactants are copper and silver nitrate, and what do they give you? Well, the, re the products would be silver and copper 2 nitrate. So, what's kind of, I'll let you write it down, and then we'll talk a little bit about this reaction here. And there's a name for this type of reaction that we're going to get to eventually. So, if you're looking at the, again, over here, these would be the reactants, and these are the products, I guess I should maybe put it in a different color. What what do you notice here? We got copper and silver nitrate. You got two things. How many things you got on the right hand side? Three. 
how many things, substances? You got two still. You got silver and copper two nitrate. What what has sort of happened to the copper and the silver, would you say? Switched? Switched places kind of thing, right? Like the copper's kind of kicked out the silver kind of thing, right? Yeah. Okay, so just keep that in mind. That's something we'll look at in the future. Here's what it looks like with copper and silver nitrate. Okay, here's one to try. So, aluminum, I don't know what you guys have on your sheet. Do you have a space? So, aluminum plus what would give you aluminum oxide? Oxygen. Oxygen? Bingo. What is his name on? Aluminum plus oxygen gives you aluminum oxide. Zinc plus oxygen. Now, these are um, single elements, right? So what are you going to get here, do you think? AJ's on fire. He's like a balloon full of hydrogen. He's on fire. Zinc oxide. Aluminum plus copper 2 chloride gives you, now this copper should be over on the other side. Oopsie. Well, I gave you the answer, didn't I? Aluminum plus copper 2 chloride gives you copper plus aluminum chloride. That's another one of those Brad Pitt, Jennifer Aniston deals, isn't it? Because aluminum would rather be, or chlorine would rather be hooked up with aluminum. Than copper. Why do you think aluminum would rather, or chloride would rather be with aluminum than copper? Any guesses? Like what would? Yeah, but aluminum is a metal. Copper is a metal. Like why does chlorine prefer aluminum than copper? Yeah, it's got to do with that. It's got to do with that in energy states. Here's aluminum. It reacts. There, there's copper. Where is it? See you? I don't see you, Copper! <laughs> it's, it's besides the end. Right there, right? And what's the other one? Aluminum? Yeah, AL. AL, yeah. So AL is a little closer, right? Is it so it reacts differently? Yeah. Yeah. So we can put chlorine on aluminum. Yeah, it's got to do with the energy states. It's a little bit complicated. Okay, I'm not going to make the mistake of clicking on the answer. This time I got sodium sulfate and calcium chloride, you'll notice this time, Charles, I have two compounds on the left. The reactants are sodium sulfate and calcium chloride. Those are the reactants. There's two compounds. I get on the right-hand side, I get calcium sulfate. What would be the other one, you think? Mr. Hydrogen Balloon, right? The, the calcium and the sulfate get together. And so that means that the sodium and the chlorine get together. Now, I don't have a sort of a celebrity analogy for this. Anyone know what sodium chloride is? You use it every day. It might be in cereal. You put it on your fries. Salt. Plain old table salt. Sodium chloride. I would not recommend you eat it after doing this chemical reaction. Don't do that. Should you ever taste something unknown in the lab? No. No. Like if you walked into Mr. Bernat's room and you saw all these beakers full of like colorless solutions that look like water, you said to yourself, man, am I ever thirsty? I'm going to need a drink. And you pick up a beaker full of that and start drinking. Good idea or bad idea? Bad idea. Bad idea. Kids have actually done that before. Really? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Do not drink unknown liquids in the chemistry lab. But what if it gives you like what is this? What if what? Your super your superpower might be the ability to not live anymore. Okay.
Uh, there's a little practice sheet there. I got a little stamp thing I'm going to show you, but you probably want to watch that little one, I think. Okay? Yeah. Oh, yeah. How much long, how long was it? 20 minutes? Uh, 23. 23. 23? We can watch that. Okay, quick, do the practice one. Quick, quick, quick. The we'll watch half a day and half tomorrow. Practice sheets. Yeah, you're going to have to think a little bit. Okay, let's do the answers. These are hard. The first one's pretty easy, right? Question number one. So what are the reactions here? Propane plus oxygen. Good old Hank Hill. What are the reactants? Propane and oxygen. When you're cooking burgers at home, where does the oxygen come from to burn the propane? The atmosphere, the air, right? There's no oxygen, you're not going to cook. What are the products? Carbon dioxide and water. So that's, the, you know, off that propane, you're getting carbon dioxide and you're getting water vapor, which is generally in the form of steam, um, and you don't really see it. What is the purpose of the arrow? It sort of does what? Kind of separates the two, would you say? It shows the difference. It's, it's the before and the after. It separates the before and the after, something like that. Okay, number two is kind of hard. You're supposed to write word equations for the following reaction. So you have to know what CaCl2 is. What is CaCl2? Well, that would be calcium, Cl2, chloride, right? And Na2SO4. Na2SO4 would be sodium sulfate. That's right. That's from that list of things we had last unit. Gives you arrow. Uh, what do we got? CaSO4. So that would be calcium sulfate plus, I spelled it wrong, NaCl. That would be sodium chloride. Right? I'll put it in blue so we can see that it's different. Okay, so how would we do this one? BACO3. That would be barium, BAC, that would be barium, CO3, carbonate, plus, I can't read it because it's reacts when heated. Oh, reacts when heated. So that means it's combining with oxygen. And it's producing BAO, not BO. BAO, which would be what? Barium oxide plus, and what's that other one there? CO2. Oh, that's easy. CO2 is carbon dioxide. So all that stuff that we did last unit is coming back. Okay, it's just a continuation. I'll have to give you some help with these kind of things on a test. I'll maybe make them like a multiple choice or something. What about AgNO3? Yep. Silver nitrate reacts with, what is it? KCl. K is potassium. Cl is chloride, chlorine. Potassium chloride gives you AgCl. Silver chloride, right? Plus potassium nitrate. Oops. You kind of get the hang of that? You have to be able to do the naming stuff from last unit. That's what makes it hard. Okay, so word equations for these here. Carbon dioxide and water are produced in human cell respiration. The reactants are sugar and an important gas that is widely available. And I helped a few people with this one. So carbon dioxide, you can just write carbon dioxide. You don't have to write it in formula form. Plus water, H2O, gives you, oh, hang on, hang on. 
those are the products, right? So those ones actually appear where? On the right hand side, right? Those ones are over here. And the reactants are sugar plus an important gas, oxygen. So that's what's called cellular respiration. That's how your, um, your body converts sugar in your cells along with oxygen and it produces carbon dioxide and water and it produces one more thing produces energy which is not really a chemical it's just what helps make you move right that's that's how you get energy from your food oh yeah we'll do this last one here stalactites form in caves when calcium bicarbonate reacts to form calcium carbonate water and carbon dioxide stalactites form in caves calcium bicarbonate so that would be one of the uh, reactants, calcium bicarbonate, reacts to form calcium carbonate. Hmm. Well, these are the products. Calcium carbonate, water, and carbon dioxide. Now, what is on the right-hand side that isn't on the left-hand side? I gotta spell things right. What's on the right hand side that's not on the left side? Is that like calcium bicarbonate would be like CA and bicarbonate would be HCO3, I think, right? Calcium carbonate, water, carbon dioxide. I think everything there. I think it's just left like that. I have to I should double check that one. It might be combining with oxygen. Right.